Hi, my name is Alan, and I want to share a little bit about the Vanagon syndrome, maybe some things to check out if yours uh, starts acting up. Vanagon syndrome is where the engine starts cutting out. Uh, I'm by no means a mechanical expert, but I did uh, learn a little bit more about the fuel injection system, so I'll walk you through some of those things, things maybe to look out for. Um, and then I'm going to show you the airflow meter, how that is not currently working well. Uh, and then I'm going to install a new one or a rebuilt one and see if that helps. So one of the things I did is I installed a new oxygen sensor. I'm back here at the uh, rear driver's side um, of the car. That is the airflow sensor right there, O2 sensor. Uh, pretty cheap at any auto parts store. Um, the attachment point here does bind, so as recommended online, you want to get a, an oil and uh, let it sit there for a while before you try to remove that. Um, otherwise, uh, there should be a plug in here, which is currently wrapped up with uh, just some electrical tape. Uh, pretty easy to install. It's probably worth mentioning uh, for the Vanagon syndrome, the O2 sensor is mentioned. Um, from what I've read, it's not recommended that, I mean, it's not usually the case that that's the culprit, but I figured uh, it was an easy enough part to switch out. It's pretty low expense, uh, it's pretty inexpensive. Uh, so you don't really lose a lot by switching that out, but I'll show you now some of the other things we looked at as well. Okay, online, a uh, few places talk about, you know, obviously the airflow meter. This is your airflow meter. This uh, was originally a 1.9 engine. Uh, I'm on a, this is a 1984 uh, Westie with the DigiJet computer. The engine was bored out to uh, 2.1 uh, capacity, but it still has all the components of a 1.9. So. Uh, I'll show you what the airflow meter looks like inside and online some people talk about uh, using a capacitor and soldering that between the second and fourth uh, terminals right there. Uh, soldering onto that second terminal was extremely tricky even with the fine-tuned soldering gun. Um, so instead I looked around and was actually pretty quickly able to find uh, the harness which accomplishes the same thing which is it takes the irregular voltage likely coming out of your airflow meter going to the digijet and regulates that signal um, to help the digijet uh, perform better and not go into default mode not freak out from getting the irregular voltage so I did install the harness that did help uh, quite a bit but uh, the but the engine was still cutting out. So uh, Peter down at San Diego Westy uh, actually helped find this other issue, which some of you may want to look at. Um, here on the distributor cap, there's a uh, there, the the digital wiring going to it uh, arrives here on that plug, and he said sometimes the wiring inside the plug can corrode. And create a short and so at low um, when the car was first starting up basically the vibration going back and forth here with the wire the all the vibration of this wire going back and forth was causing a short and cutting the engine out and so take a look at that it might be that that's the issue on yours um, and that your airflow meter O2 sensor spark plug and everything else are actually fine uh, but that it's just simply some uh, you know some old corroded wires going into that plug right there so he took a zip tie um, and just kind of immobilized this wire so that it wouldn't be moving around as much uh, we didn't mess around too much with the plug I guess you know those are hard to find or impossible to find um, now neither of those two things ended up fixing the issue um, we took a look at the airflow meter when the engine was running which I'll show you now and uh, it acts pretty pretty wildly so I'll show you what that looks like now. Anyway, so as you can see that uh, airflow meter is just acting really wildly. Uh, the terminal there as it goes back and forth across that strip uh, is probably it's probably rubbed out the contact um, over you know the 30 some odd years uh, and it's not working any, any, anymore. Um, so I did. I was able to find a replacement airflow meter on Bus Depot online. Uh, they're on the East Coast, so got that uh, in the mail. And I'm going to install it now, and uh, hopefully we'll see if uh, that helps the problem. 
Here's what the new uh, or rebuilt airflow meter looks like, by the way. Fuel Injection Corporation. That's how you know it's good. Took the packaging off already. Uh, so yeah, remanufactured by Fuel Injection Corporation. Looks pretty nice, pretty clean. You can see it's uh, the new and the old. That's the, uh, here's the, here's the old airflow meter. All right. Here's the spring door down here. So as that swings open, that moves that over the top. So mine was shaking right around here, going back and forth. Let's install the new one. Anyway, you can see the new uh, or the rebuilt airflow meter uh, is in there. The vibration obviously is still there. Uh, so maybe I'm hoping that that vibration is actually normal and it's the contacts instead that because they're they're newer uh, are sending the right signal or that the uh, the voltage change isn't as drastic um, when those contacts are, are better so I'm going to take it out for a test spin see if this actually helped um, we'll see well just driving around for a couple blocks so far so good uh, it had been stalling at idle and it's not doing that anymore. I'm about to take it on the freeway and see how that feels. Feels good, going about 65, almost 70. Sounds pretty smooth. All right, just got back from the, the drive around, uh, drove for about 10 miles. I didn't experience any issues, sounded really smooth. I hope that was the issue as you saw the, uh, the gauge was still kind of bouncing back and forth at idle on the rebuilt airflow meter, so who knows. Maybe that's normal, but maybe the, the, uh, the contacts are new and better. Um, it sounded great, and uh, hopefully that was the issue. I hope this was helpful. There's a ton of information online. The Samba Go Westy is building a brand new system. I think it's going to be like 3000 bucks. Um, but hopefully this helps uh, you guys get on the road again with, uh, with your van. All right, take it easy.